Hello everyone and welcome back to another 5K Tennis Discussion. It is Thursday, May the 30th, 2019 and we are here for show number 81. Go! Did you learn how to say let's go in French? No. Okay. Was I supposed to? Do it on tomorrow's show. Let's go. Let's go in French. Yeah. All right. It is the fifth day of Rolling Arrows action. And as well, our fifth day of our fantasy team uh, and tennis racket giveaway games, all right? And the third round is now completely set. All the second round matches have completed. So we are going to update everyone on the tennis racket giveaway. Again, a Wilson Burn 100S countervail with a four and a quarter grip uh, that I will string up with your choice of Y-Tech strings, um, as you can see here or behind me. Um, and as well, the fantasy team scores uh, that will award uh, the winner either a 5K tennis shirt, a Y-Tex shirt, or two sets of Y-Tex tennis strings. So let's jump right in. We have a lot to talk about. Um, um, so let's, let's, let's get down. Let's get, let's... Um, um, you're doing the Naomi Osaka thing. Am I saying a lot of ums? Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Tell you what, just... Well, I, the only reason I bring it up is Ethan and I were chatting earlier and, you know, we were talking about the Osaka uh, interview and I texted him back saying, um, well, I kind of, I really liked her interview because, yeah, um, yeah, she does a lot of this, like, you know, so that's what it reminded me of. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I know if one of your uh, kids ever becomes a pro in their interviews, they'll never say, um. This is a good correction on the spot. Generally, I don't get that from Carla. And while we're on this topic of, of corrections in a sense, and I, I didn't write this in, uh, we get a lot of feedback that Carla should talk more. I agree. I totally agree. Wasn't it Jalen Brown that brought this up yesterday? Well, if I don't talk a lot, it's because most of the times I'm writing the scores down and he is... You know, I'll tell him a topic. I really don't enjoy talking as much as he does. I do like saying the scores, or if he brings up a topic, I, well, I like discussing it. Usually, I let him write down the topic and then start the discussion. Okay, so... Oh, so most of the times, I'm busy being a mom or doing something else with our other job. Yeah, yeah. So, in, our, in order for us to get the show done, we're multitasking. Like today, we coached, had to do some errands, come back. I, I had to make sure the kids are fed. I have uh, Five friends... Kids. I have friends coming over trying to clean, so I'm telling him what I saw earlier, and he's writing it down. I totally agree with all the feedback that Carla should talk more. Um, I would try to. Uh, uh, our father, or my father, has told me that since day one. I agree totally. Couldn't agree more. Generally, we crunch this in uh, throughout a, a, a busy day, as we all have. Uh, I'm sitting down and writing, and she's changing diapers for the youngest one. Uh, keeping the six-year-old's Play-Doh off the kitchen table, uh, making sure the nine-year-old's not getting too snappy uh, as she grows ten, into... Ten. A ten-year-old doesn't get too snappy as she grows into being a young lady. Then uh, watching after our uh, two oldest boys and, and the like, and then our youngest one uh, again in diapers. So a lot of times I'm writing and she's doing all that uh, and cooking at the same time, and then we just kind of sit here in a sense and just roll it off the head. Uh, but she does write the scores in, so ultimately... Oh, and I do write a few things, but I tell him, you start the discussion, and I'll just jump in and give my two cents. Yeah, ultimately, if, if we didn't have to do four other jobs to to continue to keep the lights on, then, then we would we would do it a little bit differently. But currently, she's holding down the, the house, doing big things with five kids. So much love to her, but we do want her to talk more, and I must admit, she is a little camera shy in terms of speaking freely. It's like in tennis, we want to hit freely, like hit through the court, hit through the ball. Well, when I'm on she a tennis court, it's a that. different story. When I'm on a tennis court, I speak with my racket, so it's completely different. If you watch our shows in the beginning, you'll see that he did most of the talking. And now I'm starting to talk more. She's getting better, though. She's getting better, though. Uh, she swings very much freely on the tennis court. And no one's bothering her, and she's in her own world. But uh, here, for some reason, for her looking at the camera, is a little bit uh, nerve-wracking for her. For me, not a problem. Right? Right. I mean, when I was 15, I was freestyle rapping in clubs with a fake ID. So, anyway, I'm kind of used to that. But, mm -hmm. anyway, I'd be a good bet. You know, bust out something for someone if I lost a bet. I wouldn't be ready for that, though. It might be above PG anyway. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, please like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much to all of you. Without you, there is no 5K Tennis Show. I must say that, and I must say that uh, once again. Without you, there is no 5K Tennis Show. Your uh, daily conversations with Carl on multiple different platforms uh, are, are quite priceless, and we put that all those discussions together to make these shows. So much love. Let's go. By the way, thank you guys for helping us reach, uh, I think we're up to 502 subscribers. I think Dushan sent me a message, 500 subscribers. He said, wow. Well, our goal by the end of this year is 1,000 and hopefully grow more than that. I mean, I'd love to have many, many more. And like I told Justin, even if we grew a lot bigger, I will still respond to anyone that sends me an email or via YouTube or social media. I try to get to every message. Camouflage love. Camouflage love. Kind of like the doll shirt with the yellow ball coming off of it. Camouflage love. Let's go. All right. Uh, and, and, and finishing of that tiny, kind of heartfelt thank you. It's truly a, pre a pleasure to share our uh, passion uh, of tennis with all of you. And this has really become quite a quite a, a daily family deal from as far as uh, Sweden to Australia, to Serbia, and many more, Canada, uh, and, and, and I mean, what, what am I missing? There's, there's a Poland. lot of places I'm missing. Poland, I get, yeah. Uh, I get messages from Casper, um, uh, from, he's from Poland, and... Uh, Man, that guy Casper, aka Dedsaville, he keeps winning all of our strings. You must play a lot of fantasy tennis. Man, you, you should what. join our group. I'm going to send you a link via email uh, of Grand Slam Fantasy. I bet you'll do good in that group. And that group cost uh, me a, a player, and I'm fixing to get into that right now. Uh, but by the way, Casper, a.k.a. Deadsville, bro, you are like wiping out our inventory because you win everything. Bravo. <laughs> Bravo, bro. Okay, so because I just brought that up, let me get into something real quickly. We're going to start off with our fantasy team uh, competition uh, and our tennis racket giveaway uh, sweepstakes update. Um, but I, I must admit, I made a mistake. Yeah, and someone caught that. I made a mistake. paying attention. Peter Dijkstra, uh, Dijkstra uh, in Sweden, I, I hope I pronounced that correctly, uh, uh, made me aware or made us aware of a mistake that I made, and he is absolutely correct, so let me correct that right now. Okay? Uh, Carla and I make two fantasy teams, okay? We make, we make one for an online... Um, uh, team and we make one for the show only because the rules are different. The rules are a little bit different. So uh, on the, the show where I announced the teams, this is my original paper, I had here, I don't know if you can see it, but the fantasy team online to read and the fantasy team to read for this show. On the fly, flipping through paperwork, I flipped up without looking at the top and just read off a team. The teams only differed by one player, and that one player was on the women's side. Again, the rules are a little bit different. So on one team, I chose Kvitova as a player, and on the other team, I did not choose Kvitova, and I had Muguruza. I read off the team that would take place on the show, and I read off Kvitova. When I got down to keeping up the score, I went to what I had written with the heading there, and I, and I kept track like I should have read off. However, I did not read off on that. I will definitely stand behind that. I will be negating, and I already have done that, uh, negating Muguruza, uh, added to Kvitova, so I added zero points and took away Muguruza's points, and that has basically made Casper, I indicated yesterday we were tied for first, not the case after completion of the second round. At this point now, Casper is solely in first place, and I am in third, and I'll get to that now, okay? So that's my mistake. Thank you, Peter, for uh, advising us uh, about the mistake. Here is how the uh, top eight contenders stack up right now after the second round of the French Open has completed for fantasy teams. Number one, first place so far, Casper, a.k.a. Dedsaville, with 30 points and 13 players left. That's impressive. 30 points and 13 players left out of, lost three? out of 16. Yeah. Yes. In second place, Dushan Dramikanin with 28 points and 12 players left. Third place, myself, uh, with 27 points, with 12 players left. Uh, that was third and fourth place, Peter Dijkstra in Sweden, with 26 points and 11 players left. Tied for fifth are Carla and Ferzio 9, with 25 points. However, Carla has 12 players left, and Ferzio 9 has 10. So did mine not finish, or...? 
uh, th th there's a couple that are suspended. Right, I don't, I don't know. You're right, but, right, but, but, also, but also, some players lost in the first round, or you may not have had one, true, true, and, true. and you got two points, whereas none. But I added them up. They, they're, I did it five times over as to not make another mistake. Correct. Tied for fifth, Carla and Ferzio, nine. 25 points each. Carla has 12 pairs left. Ferzi has 10. Uh, in seventh place, Ethan D.A. Uh, in New York with 24 points with 10 players left. Don't listen to New York Times next time, Ethan. And in eighth <laughs> place is Kenneth Chow in Canada with 23 points and nine players left over. Okay. Everyone is still very much alive. Everyone has different teams. If someone goes out, the points stop accumulating and yours continue. Those are the top eight in contention. There's more, but those are the top eight. Uh, the tennis racket giveaway. Only two people have been disqualified from contention, generally because of Bertens losing or, or retiring and Kvitova retiring as well. Uh, so no longer is Dusan Dramakinin in contention for the tennis racket and no longer is Stimpy Boy, but Dusan Dramakinin is still very much intact for um, the fantasy team. What about that Andresco pullout? I told you. The walk <laughs> I told you. Yeah, I wasn't shocked at all. I mean, she looked. I know I got uh, B Dog sent me a message. Did you see how Andreska looked? She looked good. Um, I don't know what match he was watching because I saw something different. I saw a player that was struggling to beat a player that she should have won easily if she was playing like she was in any Wells. While at the and same her shoulder was hurting. She was out of shape. Yeah. She didn't look as confident. Her drop shots were not as low as they usually are. And she was doing it all the time, which was predictable. So I was even surprised she won that first match. Her opponent was not mentally tough. And Sophia Kennan would have been a tough opponent to beat. Followed by Serena. Oddly enough, or coincidentally enough, or however, uh, or whatever uh, word you want to use to, to, to describe this, no sooner than we finished downloading the last show and we're catching grief from everyone about saying, you know, Andreescu's just not there. She looked out of shape. Then she pulled out of the tournament. I'm, I really hope she does well upcoming in grass. And I well, really... she's shoulder injury is going to be tough. Maybe she won't even be ready for grass because grass is just a couple of weeks. Oh, yes, yes. And, and, and some at some point we need to take a day or, day or two off from, from this. But I, I guess as we do the grass season, the smaller tournaments will go like every other day until Wimbledon. And then we're back to every day again. But I can't wait. Love Wimbledon. Let's go. Uh, but but Andreescu, again, looked way out of shape to me in a short period of time. From when she won Indian Wells... Take a photogenic moment, ch -ch Kodak moment to her then, and then ch -ch a Kodak moment to her last match when she was on the sideline. She looked ten, well, 10 said, pounds out of shape. There was another viewer that said, well, duh, she was hurt, but you're 18. You shouldn't get out of shape that quickly. I mean, if you're a 40-year-old woman, 50, 60, okay, but 18-year-old? I remember at 18, I was... Like, ready to attack the world. Let's go. Exactly. Come yeah. on. 18. Man, 18 years old, it's hungry. I'm still Unstoppable. hungry. Unstoppable. I'm still hungry, though. Yeah. I'm still hungry now. Okay? I'm hungry to win this tournament, and I'm hungry to win Wimbledon as well. And, and this is why I go back to, we'll probably won't see a Serena Williams for a long time. Even though Naomi Osaka reminds me of a young Serena. I think she it's, wants it, to it, be It like seems her. like her, her, her court kind of attitude sends, tends to be very Serena-ish, and not in a bad way. It's kind of like when Dimitrov jumped on the scene, you thought he was like baby Federer. She's like baby Serena. Not in a bad way. I love Serena. Yeah. Uh, oh, she's mentally tough like Serena. Yeah. Serena got through a lot of matches because she's mentally they tough. They just have that whole kind of diva mm -hmm. kind of, you know what I'm saying? They have that kind of, they, I, she kind of comes across airheaded, but be, because she's so good in the game, I have a hard time she's believing. She's not airheaded. I have a hard time believing that's really, I, ha, I have a feeling that Osaka is extremely intelligent. Me too. Uh, and, and a whole different person behind closed doors. Uh, I'm just saying. Carla has a tough time talking to you guys when it's just us and a camera. Uh, I, I would I would have a feeling that Osaka is in a sense the same Probably. way. She's not comfortable with it. She's not comfortable, use. but it, to, to play at her level of the game, uh, it, it, it's no easy feat. So let's just leave it at that. Yes. All right. By the way, moving forward, um, I'm wearing my San Francisco Giants hat for a reason. I know my, my dad always says, why would you even wear a ball cap? It doesn't even cover your ears. Your, your ears are going to burn off and have skin cancer. But I'm doing this one for a reason. Okay? Here's the reason why. I'm a California kid. Okay? California kid, born in San Francisco, raised in Southern California. I'm a California kid. I have three sports teams. Number one, the San Francisco 49ers. Birds chirping. Number two, the Los Angeles Lakers. Birds chirping. I get LeBron's there, but the birds are still chirping. 
And number three, the San Francisco Giants, who are the only one of the three in the current season, and they are dead last. I don't know. How but are my Yankees doing? I didn't check your Yankees. You should keep up with your team, because I don't even like the Yankees. I mean, they're a good team. They're America's team, I guess you could say, but if they met the Giants, I would hope they they're get the destroyed. Best. Okay. Anyway, uh, all I'm saying is I'm wearing my Giants hat today to say, let's go, the Giants, wake up. Hey, man, poll question. Can anybody tell me which one of those three teams, the San Francisco 49ers, the San Francisco Giants, or the Los Angeles Lakers, will finally come out of the funk? I say the Lakers. Next year. I don't. I say the, Gi- I, I say the 49ers because they got Garoppolo. I mean, okay. better than nothing. Right? Better than nothing. Didn't they get Richard Sherman as safety two from the Seahawks? I think so. Sherman's good. I think so. All right. Uh, By the way, speaking about, or talking about basketball tonight, the beginning of the NBA Finals uh, comes into fruition, and we have the Golden State Warriors. Yes. Let's go, Toronto. Take them down. Yes, they're so tired of the Warriors. Yes, they're across the bay from San Francisco, but that (laughs) that makes me not like them. I understand that team was in the Bay Area, but I just didn't grow up uh, following the Warriors, even though I like Chris Mullen back in the day a lot. However, uh, the Lakers was kind of like my backyard team in a sense. Uh, but I hope, I hope that Toronto wins this, but I think uh, the Golden State Warriors will win in six games, four to two. Okay. What are your thoughts on that one? Okay. Thoughts on that one? Starts well, tonight. Let's, Warriors go down. Uh, all right, so let's uh, move forward into the first real quick topic before we jump into draws. Again, yes, I want Carla to talk more. Talk more. Let's Let's get down. Uh, but uh, again, hopefully we described that earlier, but I still don't think it's an excuse to let her off the hook for not talking more. Uh, maybe we can just uh, send the kids on a skateboard trip like around this island we live on, and then she can just write a lot. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just kidding. We have fun. All right. Uh, topic number one and a quick one. Gal Monfils is the player behind the topic. Okay. Uh, Gal Monfils um, has been someone that Carl and I have followed for a very long time, and we have debated upon uh, him for, for a very long time, many years. And, and we have always told ourselves that he is one of the top players that would make a list of the, the players that have never won a major that, a major that should have. I think Sanga has been on that list. Burditch. Burditch has been on that list. Monfils has been on that list. Uh, the only people, in my opinion, right now in Monfils's way, approaching a Djokovic—I think he's in Djokovic's half—approaching a Djokovic semifinal are Juan Martín Del Potro and Dominic Thiem. And I, Hatchinoff. And Hatchinoff. I don't think he'll have a problem with Hatchinoff, by the way. That's why I didn't write him here. Does Gael Monfils have a good opportunity? To meet Novak Djokovic in the semifinals. Just answer it. I think he can get through TM the way TM was playing. I watched his match today. He was very shaky. Uh, he has a good chance against Dominic TM. I think he'll have a tougher time with Del Potro. I think at this point right now, Monfils, I am hoping, meets Novak Djokovic in the semifinals. It won't make a difference. It won't make a difference there, in my opinion. I agree. I've seen Monfils throw everything in the toolbox at Novak Djokovic to try to win a match. Novak's in a major. too strong. In Novak the is too consistent, too strong, and doesn't buy into any antics. He uh, laughs. He but, laughs. He but, tries to do it back to him. Actually, does Gael Monfils have a chance to make the semifinals? That's a good chance. Now, when I started this pre-French Open discussion, I asked everybody: I said no. Did Gael Monfils have a, even a slight chance of making it to the second week? Does everyone want to change their tone against me? Everyone hates on me. Why? Because I just tell it how it is. Let's go. Just tell it how it rolls. I mean, I'd be always right, but dang, you can't tell me that Gal Monfils may not make the semis or, 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 or has a good chance to make the semis. And let's, let's be real. Let's be real. He could make a final. He could beat Djokovic if it happens. He could. I'm not saying he will, but he could. Tell me I'm wrong. He's got a 10% chance of beating Djokovic and a 50% chance of making the semis. Am I wrong? Don't think so. Don't think so. Don't think so. All right, Carla, we're going to turn this whole section over to you for draws, uh, and that's women draws and men's draws. Um, And and because you need to talk more, and I agree with this, I'm going to stay mute, and I want you to just ride out. 
Well, you need to give your opinion on the matches. Oh, I will, but I'm going to let you ride out. Well, Naomi Osaka from Japan, the number one seed, took out Victoria Azarenka in three sets. Four, six, seven, five, six, three. First match, first set, Azarenka came out, hitting the ball right, clean, hitting it in. Uh, it was a tight match. Second set, Azarenka had a good chance to win that set, to win the match, but... She got shaky on some of the points, uh, and again, if we had the younger version of Mazarenka, she would have finished this match in two. But it went to Mazarenka, she was hitting the ball out a lot. The rallies got shorter, Osaka started speeding her strokes, hitting harder, hitting winners. Um, it got up to 5-1, and I think Osaka was serving. Uh, Azarenka broke her, held her serve, and then Osaka served for the match, and it was over. I was bummed out. Honestly, I wanted Azarenka to go further on in this slam. I knew if she didn't close it out in two sets, Osaka would win that match. My first thought that comes to my mind here is that the only time our screech level indicator has been out in this entire tournament on both the men's and women's sides was on Azarenka's first match where she played Ostapenko. It registered in, re registered in on a 9.2 threshold, almost a 9.3. I like Azarenka, and I hope she finds her form. I really and truly do. However, with her exiting the tournament, the, the opportunity of the Screech Level Index indicator from coming back out uh, to actually get tested during a match has dropped uh, substantially. Uh, so, again, I, I wish the best for Azarenka. Uh, I did think that Azarenka could win this match and thought she was going to win it in the second set. And Osaka found a way. Uh, the screeching did not get in her way. And that's where she reminds me of Serena. She kind of got down on herself. She, got down, she yeah. started kind of tearing up and she fought through it. You know, she I watched her pump herself up. She talks to herself a lot, which is what Serena does a lot. Um, and she just got through it. I mean, that's why she is number one in the world. And now it opens up for her because she's going to face off. Uh, Katarina Sienakova from the Czech Republic, the qualifier, who defeated Maria Sakari from Greece, the 29th seed, in three sets. So Osaka's draw now opens up more. Yeah, she's going to cruise into the fourth here. And, and, and this year, well, good for this qualifier. Yeah, she from the she Czech Republic. Sakari. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, Pliskova's still in it. We have this girl, Sienakova, both from the Czech Republic. A lot of Czech Republic players lately. Yeah, this is, this is great. Just like the Serbian men over here on the men's side. It's nice to see such small areas of the world that have been involved in, gee whiz, war-torn areas for eons of time to somehow always make a foothold uh, on the global stage in the sport of tennis. Definitely. Great job here for Sienakova. Um, I'm only pulling for Sinyakova in this match because of some fantasy team uh, swings that could take place I just if don't Osaka see it. lost. I don't see it happening. I but think I don't Osaka's see it happening. mentally too strong. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. Next match, the pick you had chosen was uh, Carolina Garcia, your 24 seed from France, goes down to uh, Anna Blinkova from Russia, another qualifier who comes through in three sets. And she is waiting for the winner of Madison Keys, the 14th seed from the U.S., who is facing Priscilla Hahn from Australia, a wild card. They both split sets. The match was suspended due to darkness. What? Keys? Come on. I cannot believe that here she goes again, splitting sets. I mean, I, luckily for her, it was suspended so she can come back fresh, rethink, talk to her coach, and, and maybe have a chance to close the set out, the last set, quickly. I, I think this is good for Keys. It was a good thing that I got suspended. Yeah, Keese is a big hitting, strong girl. Uh, the clay slows everything down a bit. Obviously, she was surely fatigued, splitting sets. I think she comes out and takes it 6-3 tomorrow. Uh, and I think that Madison Keys will end up taking on, uh, obviously, Anna Binklova. And, and I think that Keys will win that match. And, and I think that will set up a Keys osaka uh, fourth round match. I really do. Yeah. Serena Williams, the 10th seed from the USA, took out Kurumi Nara, 6-3, 6-2. It was a fun match in the first set, but Serena was the much better player, had the better weapons. Uh, she put, uh, you know, she had better strokes, better, um, everything was better. She was just much better than her player. Um, and she will face off Sophia Kennan, who had a walkover thanks to Andrescu pulling out. So this is a 21-year-old American of Russian descent against Serena Williams. I think Serena Williams will take her out in three sets. Serena, will win. Serena Williams uh, actually was part of myself having a laugh this morning very early. The laugh wasn't from Serena. It was from a viewer who we've had some fun oh, dis yes. discussions with, Jalen Brown. <laughs> yes, yes. This was hilarious. 
So uh, I, we we woke up and I think it was like what six in the morning. I was up at four. I never went back to sleep after that. Yeah. So I, all I recall is reading a message from Jalen Brown that indicated that if Serena lost to Nara, he would eat a roll of extra cat gut tennis string that he had because it was fully digestible. Why not? It, I, it may not be funny to you, but in the in the content of the moment and the conversation. It was absolutely hilarious. Let's be real. Serena is way better than Nara. Uh, and, 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 and let's just be real. It's no shock that, that she won that match. Sophia Kennan, though, I think will be equally as easy as a dismissal as Nara was, in my opinion. She should might, be. Should be. She I mean, might win be. one or two more games. But, but here's a question. Uh, Andreescu pulled out, enabled Kennan to walk through. Do you think that Kennan uh, having a walkover actually will add a little bit of rust? And then actually hurt her when no. she plays Serena? Or do you think it will help her? It will make no difference. No difference whatsoever. Either one who would have faced her, Andrescu, Kennan, that it matter if they play each other, Serena would have been the favorite in that match. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I don't think that the walkover will help Kennan be any more or less fresh. I, I think she's going to get beaten three and four by Serena. All right, next match, one of your favorite players, Andrea Pekovic from Germany, took down Sue Shea, the 25th seed from Taipei, in three tight sets. Good for the German player. I mean, this is her her surface that she enjoys the most, and it was good for her to be a seated player. I mean, too bad you didn't pick her for your uh, fantasy game. Usually he does, but he you know, did not. You know, you had to mention that. There have there have been two players in about a decade that Carla and I have been doing these fantasy teams, and this is the first tournament we've ever done it here. The rules are a little bit different than we do online, uh, just by a hair. But I have always, in all of those years, selected Andrea Petkovic if she's unseated as my unseated player, and I've always picked Grigor Dimitrov. The two, the the first time I've ever not picked either on my team, they're both winning. Go figure. Yes. I like Pekovic a lot. Let's go, Pekovic. I wish you would join my team. She could beat Barty, who she faces next. Well. But I don't think so. I don't think so. I watched Ashley Barty, the 8C from Australia, take out the American Don Danielle Collins, 7561. I watched this match from the beginning. I'm not a big fan of Barty, but I said, you know what? Let me give her a shot. I want to see how she plays uh, against the feisty American. I can tell you that Collins made a fool out of herself in this match. Anytime Barty hit a ball out, she would go. In her face, and Barty would look back at her with, you know, a death stare. Uh, even the crowd was laughing at Collins. Someone needs to tell her, don't do that. That is bad sportsmanship. You don't scream and you don't cheer an opponent's mistakes. A winner, sure, you scream, but you don't need to scream for a mistake. And she was just, she reminds me of a Bratz doll. I'm sorry. A she Bratz looked, doll? Have you ever seen a Bratz doll? I know Ethan has. Google it up. She looks just like that. I mean, when she grins, she looks evil. And I, I, you can tell there's bad blood between them. Evil? She does. Her teeth come out. It's, she doesn't look like a pleasant player to be around. It's almost scary to play against her. And I like Collins. But when she's out there and, and she's not hitting the right shot, she looks she's feisty. And you can tell Barty's played her twice already. There's no good blood between them. And the better player won. Uh, Pekovic is going to have half her hands full. And I told Justin, I said, Barty can get through Serena and Osaka gets through. I think Barty has a good chance against Osaka. Uh, there was a quote at one point in time that was relayed to us from Michael Figgins. What's up, Mike Figgins? Uh, I think he he's was in a, London. He, he's heading. He's heading to uh, France. And was in Iceland that. the other day. Yes. Uh, he gave us a quote that you know, and something along these lines. In tennis, there's kind of a code, or in life, there's a code of kind of rules and conduct and ethics, in a sense that we live by. But we can't get upset when we see others uh, not uh, living by them, uh, and we can't get upset if we think everybody will. Uh, Obviously not. But so, so, Col so Collins is feisty. It's, it's foolish to but, act that way. But, but I understand it's foolish. The, the road that Collins has been on, she was denied from going to the University of Florida because she wasn't good enough. She goes to the University of Virginia, won two NCAA titles, uh, has a deep run, and uh, was it the Australian or was it the U.S. last year? I don't recall. Um, so she's been through the thick of things. She's been told she wasn't good enough. I get, sure, I get, I get her feistiness. But, you know, just kind of like the, the likes of um, any bad boy in tennis, whether it's Kyrgios or Djokovic with his... Why do you have to bring up Kyrgios? I'm so tired I, I'm of just saying, everyone up. has their cheesy deal. Everyone well, has their cheesy way. deal. In the last uh, so room, you I, got I, I bad wouldn't... reputation. Okay, you get so... a bad reputation. I just wouldn't cheer somebody hits out and then rub it in their face and show you your know, team. I mean, There's a conduct that you must... 
You must I, act I get a that. Way. I get that. But some people don't act the way. Um, and they she's just talented. Don't. They she's just a don't. talented player. We've seen Gal Monfils with antics. We've seen Young Djokovic. Even Djokovic. That, that Djokovic that used to make impersonations and come out and act like other people, which was entirely cheesy. And even this deal was entirely cheesy. Uh, I mean, we, we've seen Monfils throw through theatrics. We've seen McEnroe. We've seen Nastasi. And we've seen Connors. And gee whiz, the list goes on. So we can't we can't hate on Collins because that's just her way. I, I I'm not a huge fan. I'm just saying I'm not gonna hate on her for trying to get herself pumped up and to throw someone else off balance, getting uh, beaten decisively in a sense. Right. You get me though. I feel where she's coming from. I would just choose not to do it that way. Right. Next match, Simona Halep, the three seed from Romania, was taken to three sets by Magda Lynette from Poland. I was a little nervous for Halep, but she pulls through that match, and she's waiting. For the match between Krunic and Serenko, which mm. was suspended at 6 6 in the third set. Yeah, I lost two women today. I lost Kazakina and I lost Garcia, and then I had to wipe out my Muguruza and add in my bagel point Kavitova. I had a bad day on the fantasy team today. Well, I, re I really did. Halep's going to win her next match. Talking about that, Monica Puig from Puerto Rico takes out your player, Daria Kazakina from Russia, the 21 seed, convincingly 6 3 6 1. I guess Stevens old coach, uh, Sloan Stevens old coach is making a difference in her game. And she will face the 17 year old. Uh, thanks to you, Casper. I hope I'm saying this right. Detsaville. E or Detsaville. Igor Schwatek. Schwatek, yeah. No, it's not Schwatek. He said it's Schwatek. I hope I'm saying it right. I'm trying. She's from Poland and so is he. 6360. So, so I'm assuming his, his pronunciation is right. Schwatek. So, yeah. so he yeah. sent us like a voice recording of how to say it. Uh, so I'm gonna go with what yeah, they say. Yeah, Tech. That's what Tech. Okay, so six three six zero. I think the seventeen year old is gonna be a lot for Puig. She's feisty. Mm -hmm. She can play. This girl Swatek, Swatek, mm -hmm. who has jumped on the scene until this fantasy team group started. I'd heard of her, but I never paid any attention to uh, her overall game and of itself. She's got the sixteen seed uh, Kyung Wong. I mean, she's been just rolling through like with a whole lot of just offensive tennis, and, and she's gonna, I think, at this point, destroy Puig. I can't believe Puig. Um, a one today against Kazakina. I thought that was an easy win. But I think Swatek or Swatek will have a tough time with Halep. Well, some of you viewers got on me about why didn't I pick Sabalenka? Well, here you go. Amanda Nisimova, the 17-year-old American, took out Arena Sabalenka. 6-4, 6-2. I told you so. Sabalenka needs to stick to doubles or change coach. She's too friendly with her coach. They fight back like they're kids. A coach you're supposed to respect. Look as a mentor and not fight with him and disrespect him. Yeah, they and get, that's why I picked Amanda Nisimova to move through this match. Yeah, that, that is a good point. Uh, I, I have seen numerous occasions where Anisimova, or not Anisimova, but Sabalenka and her coach will be kind of on the sidelines and they'll be like fighting like they're like... Isn't his name Tursunov? He was an ATP player. Or is it Medvedev? No, Tursunov. No, Tursunov, yeah. yeah. Uh, but but yeah, they kind of fight it out like almost they should be like an old married couple that really doesn't get along anymore. Not so it's kind of an odd deal there. But anyway, I I'm shocked that Sabalenka lost that match, but good for you and your pick. And she's on my fantasy group, so I did good on that one. Irina Camelia Bagu from Romania defeats uh, Carolina Mushiba from Ch Czech Republic in three sets and will face off Ekaterina Alexandrova. Uh, from Russia, who took out Samantha Stosia, the veteran, in three sets. So Samantha Stosia actually put up a fight, but the younger player came through. So it's a toss-up. Bagu, Alexandrova, I'm not sure. No, 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 no. Bagu, oh, plays, I'm sorry, Bagu plays. Bagu plays. Bagu plays Animisim or Animisova. There you and go. Alexandrova plays this no-namer out of nowhere actually, no, Spanish she's not player a from no Moldova. She's from Moldova. I, but I don't know. She's. I, I have. I've never followed uh, Bolsova from Moldova, who who flies underneath the Spanish flag. I have it. I'll admit. No, I. I she's I admit. actually 21 years old. She took out uh, Sorana Crostea, seven six seven six. She's 21 from Moldova, but plays for Spain. And she also played at the University of Oklahoma. Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State. So she played. For her. She played. Oklahoma State is in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the Cowboys. That's where Barry Sanders, the football player, the running back for the Detroit Lions, long veteran, best of all time in my opinion, less Walter Payton or Jim Brown. Uh, but he was an Oklahoma State Cowboy. They got a good football program there, and obviously they had a good tennis program. And look, um, this opens up for Anisimova. That is wide open for her to make a quarterfinal. 
if it's wide open for Enemy Sova, who's still a young thing, like a, like a couple of these girls are, I think it's even more open for Bagu. I think Bagu destroys Annie Simova, and, and, and I really hope this young Oklahoma State graduate, uh, Bolsova, that was from Moldova, that now plays for Spain, holy tongue twister, Batman, I really hope to see her in the uh, fourth round. I think, I think... Here we go. I disagree. What I think I think Begu, the Romanian, will face off in the fourth round against Bolsova. Disagree. We'll see what happens. Uh, a match I finished today from last night. Uh, Belinda Benchik took out Laura Siegman in the third set, 6-4. And that's my finalist, and I move on with her. No, yes. Good However, Sloane Stevens will beat her uh, uh -huh. and meet Serena that's in the final. That's funny. All right. All right, let's jump into the men's action. Uh, let's not spend a lot of time on the first one because Novak Djokovic is just too good for the lucky loser. Laxinen, he cruised through. I'm going to go ahead and cruise through the next one as well. Well, uh, Simone goes down to Caruso, so Djokovic, yeah. Caruso, Djokovic is going to go third. Yeah, n n now uh, let, me, let me remind everyone uh, about the name Caruso. When I was a boy, I used to watch this movie called The Great Caruso. It was like an opera singer, and he would be like, la, 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 la. It's a great story. Uh, an Italian opera singer, uh, and the name was The Great Caruso. Could it be, could it be that uh, Salvatore, Salvatore Caruso will now become The Great Caruso and have a chance against Novak Djokovic? Nope. Negative. Not going to happen. This this beating is going to be equally as bad as the beating that he gave Laxanen today. Yes. Uh, Djokovic will sail comfortably into the fourth round, playing either uh, Jen Leonard Struff or Borna Koric, who Koric is on my fantasy team. Let's go Koric! Koric will have a tough match against Struff. He's going have a real tough he match. Who took out Albat. So that should be an interesting match to watch. I'll actually watch that one because I think yeah, that... Yeah, that's a good match. Yeah, I think either Struff or, or, or Koric should take a set from Djokovic, but that's about it. Look, that, that struff Koric match has the potential to be a very dynamic uh, uh, hitting from the baseline match, slugging it out over five sets. That one... That one is going to make Djokovic happy because I can promise you that whatever happens in the struff Koric match is going to tire the George. winner. And then I think Djokovic will have an easier time uh, even getting through the winner of those two and, and then approaching the quarterfinals. Well, follow the Fognini, the beautiful beer. Goes through Del Bonis and will face off Roberto Bautista Agut, who took out Taylor Fritz. Uh, another interesting match, I think Fognini will come through with Bautista, but it will be a battle. I see this one going four sets. It just depends on the overall trajectory of Fabio Fignini's beard comb. Uh, beard comb. If, if his bristles on his beard are too far over to one side, when he hits, the wind tends to shear off his racket and carry his balls, wa balls wide uh, off the deuce side of the court. Sometimes if they're sheared off too much to the right, when he hits his two-handed backhand, it shears off too much to the right. So it really takes a good tailoring job on the beard to keep everything central and to keep the head coming around with the left hand. So in tennis, we learn that when we hit the ball, we hit the ball uh, and let's try to get our elbow kind of at target. I'm going up the line, boom, there's my elbow. I'm going cross court, boom, there's my elbow. All right, so you're telling the beginner that. For Fabio, it's different. For Fabio, the elbow is out. His beard is the guiding point. Down the line, done. And he Cross smiles court. when he does it. His white teeth, it's you know, sober. the tan, all the tan. <laughs> okay. Now, when you really have to watch out for Fabio is when his bandana, his skull um, uh, logo on his shirt, and his beard, his skull cap, or his bandana, his skull and his beard, if he hits a shot and his contact point comes around and it lines up with the skull, the beard, and the bandana, it's a winner every time. Hmm. As long as that happens, he can win the French. Interesting. Good. Dushan Lajovic from Serbia, the 30th seed, will meet Alexander Zverev, the 5th seed. I watch both matches. Fun and quick match for Zverev. No competition there. He had uh, Mikhail My uh, Wamayer from Sweden, the qualifier. Yimmer, and yeah. Yimmer and Lajovic came through in three sets as well. I think Lajovic, though, is going to be a challenge for Zverev, and Zverev needs to watch out for the Serbian. I hope Lajovic wins this match. No disrespect to Zverev, but I have Lajovic on my fantasy team. A couple others of us do. I had him on there before RJ Elysian dropped. So I got hosed with my Kvitova that I made a mistake on. But, I mean, jeez, man, I got hammered. I totally made a snafu when I lose Kvitova. But 
Auger Elysium pulls out and I give everyone a replacement. And I had Lajovic in the well, first Well, you wouldn't place. give her replacements for anyone in yeah. Dominic Tiam comes through just and kidding, beats. Just kidding, just kidding. And in four sets, Bublik. Bublik had a good chance. Um, I watched the match in the beginning. Uh, he had the interesting sleeve tattoo on his right hand. I like hand. that. I like that. He looked like he ran Something out of gas in the last set, though. He could barely move, was trying drop shots that made no sense. So yeah. I knew he was done in the fourth set. Yeah, no, I, 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 was, I thought it was pretty cool. I yeah. mentioned it because anytime I see someone with a tattoo, I say, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I have a lot of them. I, I, have, the I have a from, Roger Federer on my back. The girl from Moldova has a, a tiger on her arm too yeah I, I enjoy that and I understand when I'm like you know 97 if I, I, I get don't there, my, that, that I have none that I might look like a raisin but you know right now I'm getting down that's what I like to do well so. he will face off Pablo Cuevas who took out Kyle Edmund Kyle Edmund had to retire in the last set or the fourth set due to shoulder injury all right who, real quick who wins between Lajovic and Zverev I'm gonna go with Lajovic I'm gonna go with Lajovic too uh who wins between TM and Pablo Cuevas uh, TM should win that. TM's going to win that match. It didn't sleep the night before. Yes. It, it should be very well, in my opinion. I think Lajovic has the goods to beat Zverev. Okay. And, I, and, I, and I think that Bautista Agu and Fognini, as you said, is a toss-up. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm really hoping for big things from Lajovic. All right, here we go. Uh, Huang, Antonio Huang from France. The wild card took out Fernando Verdasco, the 23 seed in four sets. That's what happens when you have no respect for the ball boys. Karma. Just kidding. <laughs> Uh, I, don't, I don't think you are kidding. I think that's truth. I really believe in karma. I really believe that if you do good things or go out of your way to maybe pick something like trash off the ground or help someone bring something that they can't carry to their door or whatever it may be, I think what goes around comes around. Uh, I, again, karma is everything for me. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of you would agree, and maybe some disagree, but when you snub the ball boy and, uh, and get called out by some of the worst bad boys in tennis for being kind of... Uh, too queenish in a sense. Um, I, I think that karma played a part okay. in it, but none, but nonetheless, good for the guy Huang, who's a, a French player. Interesting last name for a French player. You'll have two French players, but Monfils should come through that. I mean, the crowd will be happy to see them both, but they're gonna root for Monfils. Yeah, watch out for Monfils. Monfils TM square off. I, I'm going with Monfils. And Same then, here. And, and then if Monfils wins that match, I want an absolute apology in the comment section for everyone in comments that was like, oh, "Are you serious, Justin? What are you serious?" The uh, Monfils, really? I, I, I said it before the show. I picked him in my predicted draw to go uh, bah, 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 uh, to meet Monfils. And what did I write here? Toss up when I have TM and Monfils right there. Okay. All right? Next match. So, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm getting down when I get down. Kara catching on moves on in four sets against Barreri and is waiting for the winner of Pui or Clisson. Uh, Clisson's up on Pui two to one sets. Match got suspended. Kachanov should get through. Kachanov. Kachanov should get through whoever wins that match. Uh, well, I, maybe Pui will, if he pulls it out, maybe Pui will have a little bit of a home field advantage. Well, he's down 3 1 in the next set, so he's in uh, trouble. You know, maybe he comes out fired up and, and sleeps a little bit better. Or whatever. Resmo can give him some tips. Yeah, I, I think Kachanov will end up meeting. Uh, well, it's still a toss up, even at 3 1. It, it just is. But I think Kachanov will move forward. And, and, and like we discussed from the very beginning of the draws coming out, we thought that Kachanov and Del Potro would meet one another in the fourth round, and it looks to be the case. Yes, Jordan Thompson from Australia comes through, defeats the veteran Karlovich in four sets, and Juan de Martin Del Potro had a battle against Yosh uh, Yoshito Nishioka, thanks to Casper, Yoshito Nishioka. Uh, he put up a fight, five sets. So Del Potro is now facing Thompson, and honestly, he should go through that uh, that next match and head into a fourth round against Hatchinoff, in my opinion. A really good pick by Casper, aka Deadsville in Poland, who was well picked Schweitek, right? Yes. Pick Schweitek uh, to to have picked Nishioka. I saw that. Schweitek. I, I was Schwatek. a Schweitek. I, I was like, why did this guy pick Nishioka? I thought he meant Nishikori. He pulled off uh, a round and then almost beat. Del Potro. Yeah. Good pick. A, a, a nice pick, unfortunately, uh, Nishioka's road stop today. And unfortunately for Diego Schwartzman, who finished his match today, goes down to Leonardo Mayer in four sets. Not a shock. Uh, either one was going to lose in the next round, and they will lose in the next round. Sure. Uh, at least that's my thoughts, or, or at least my opinion on that one. All right, um, let's move forward. Carla, by the way, um, I made her come up with the topic, and she came up with the topic. Thanks, so, Ethan. So I wouldn't talk so much. So she actually didn't come up with the topic. It was actually Ethan Thanks, DA's Ethan. topic in New York. 
So she's going to bring that topic up. We're going to let her roll with it. Well, Ethan Diaz sent me an article. It's about tennis moves towards talk taking the human element out of line calls. Uh, what it is, it's called Hawk Eye Live. Uh, the ATP is deciding during Wimbledon during the summer if they're going to use it in the tournaments. Well, what the Hawk Eye Live does, it takes out the line judges out of the matches. So basically, you would just have an umpire. And no line judges. They tried this at the ATP uh, Next Gen ATP in Milan. They did this in Delray and, and, Beach. And they did it on the seniors league. I they think. did it on the seniors league to test it. Uh, I think John McEnroe liked it, uh, but they quite haven't decided. Um, it would give cues to the umpire who's sitting there anytime the machine bleeps. They're trying to figure out the sound. Well, I read the whole article, and I must say I disagree with this. This is like going back to the supermarket where now you have no cashiers. Or you go to uh, any restaurant and you have to order through a machine. Well, we're eliminating jobs from people. I mean, line judges are important. I mean, you're going to hear a machine beep and just an umpire sitting there with ball boys. We already took out the net person. Remember when we used to have a net person for the legs? They used to call net cords. Now we're going to take out line judges. I think that's, I'm not ready to have robots control everything. No. Okay, let, let's start with, I, I forgot about the net cord um, uh, caller, and they put in, I forget, there's a name for it, it gets a chirp. If the ball crosses the net, hits the net, and rolls over it, it goes beep. Um, how many times does just the wind off the ball, and it's not even a let, does it cause a false let? I, I think that we have all uh, seen matches where this occurred. The player is hitting, boom, clean serve, you know, it clears the net by a millimeter or two, and, and just, the and just simply the let meter comes on. It didn't even clip the tape in the first place, number one. Machines make mistakes and humans make mistakes. Let's be real that the humans generally design the machines. However, with art artificial intelligence, I think that may change. That's a whole other topic for a whole other avenue of shows. Won't get into the future humanity's demise based upon AI on this show. Uh, anyway. I know Ethan was for it, but I have to disagree with him. I just don't want to see more people lose their jobs. They, we have enough people in this world losing their jobs thanks to computers. Number one, first and foremost, I disagree with the thought of it totally. Number one, because of job loss. The world is competitive enough. Yeah. Um, uh, my kids score high on the ACT now, and it's hard for them to even get in uh, to college with high ACT scores because the competition has opened up um, to, to all different uh, areas of the world. And there's not a problem with that. That's a wonderful thing. But tennis is a sport that involves tradition. Um, just like going to uh, college or, or anything else, uh, I, I think it's really important to, to keep tradition of umpires and a human nature uh, for job loss, number one. Number one, okay? People struggle. They need the jobs, number one. Right. Number two, let's look at baseball, for instance. We have an umpire that calls pitches and strikes behind the plate. For years, there has been technology available to make this right or wrong. But what would happen to the tradition of the game of baseball if you remove the umpire, stuck a catcher's mitt back there uh, with the catcher, and, and then everything else was done by computer? Then you've lost tradition. You've lost another job. You've lost kind of the foundation of the game, right? There is some joy in sometimes seeing the, the umpire and the player kind of get odds to ends. It's part of the whole deal. You know, not every ball bounces in your court. Not every ball bounces your way. Isn't that like life anyway? I mean, we if, if we go to court in the court system, does the computer tell us if we're guilty or not? Is the jury a computer? I mean, what 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 is it coming to? We already have gone to all majors with no tiebreakers in the fifth set. Well, and, French Open said they're not doing. Yeah, it. and now I read the, another article where French yeah, Open said they are not doing. Yeah, it. and now the only major with no tiebreaker and the fifth set is the French Open. Um, I used to, honestly, I used to rank the French Open, which was not, not it wasn't termed Roland Garros when I started watching the French Open, it was just the French Open, right? Uh, but I have never ranked the French Open being my top uh, tournament out of the four majors. I have not. It was always kind of tied for the last with the Australian, no disrespect there, but when I was a boy, the Australian wasn't as big of a deal as it is now. Wimbledon was was the kind of the, the climax. It was everything. And then U.S. Open was there. And then you kind of had the, the Australian and French kind of like, you know, some players may play it, some may not. For me now, the French Open has jumped up to being tied with me for Wimbledon. Uh, and, then, and then the Australian and U.S. last for the simple fact Wil Wimbledon holds the prestige less the, the Mayhut uh, uh, Isner match that went $27 million in the fifth set. They should have just fought that out. They both are 
I'll stop on that. They both are not um, at the level of player that I think should have changed the game. Just saying. If it was Djokovic and Nadal that went $3 million in the fifth, I, I think we It wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have happened. No. Um, furthermore... It wouldn't have happened. You're right. It wouldn't um, have happened. No, it wouldn't have happened. Sorry. Yeah, I, I mean, for me, the French Open deserves props. They, they have stuck with tradition. Uh, I think they could use a roof in a sense, but clay absorbs the moisture. We'll get into all that. But don't take the line judges away, or don't take the don't take the the, the, the referee away. Yeah, you might as well add machines to suck up the ball. Yeah, and shoot it out. It, yeah, and create angles on the court so the ball just rolls down to a gutter suck and they it out. and they just pop out of the court right next to the player's Let, foot. And let's add a robot that would just come out with the top. Yeah, or, or just throw in throw in like holes all over the court so if a player wants a ball, he can just pull on his left ear er, er, and the ball pops out of the ground because he's got a diode implanted in his cheek, you know. Slap this cheek, ball pops up. Slap that cheek, instant replay. Blink twice, and you can argue with the guy or the robot up in the bleachers somewhere. Give me a break. I mean, come on. That's ridiculous. Let's, let's end more jobs and end more tradition uh, for the ability of a few whiners. Whatever. Sell the software somewhere else. Anyway, moving forward, last part of the show. I always like to do 12 rapid-fire questions. So we are going to play 12 rapid-fire questions now. Carla answers them as well as all of you. Uh, we always like to read the answers, so if you participate in this game, you must answer them quickly. Uh, you can't uh, really deliberate on it too much. So just type them in as we go, or just listen. Or not. Let's go. All right, rapid-fire question number one. Are you ready, Carla? Yes. You must watch the camera. You cannot look at my paper. I know you have a hard time looking at the camera for long periods of time, but this is where you must do it. Well, maybe they, if I saw Thor or Iron Man there, then I could. All right, here we go. <laughs> Question number one. Does anyone believe me now that Gal Monfils has a chance to win this tournament? No. Question number two. Will Svitolina's walkover rest, she had a walkover, right? Mm -hmm. Will Svitolina's walkover rest actually hurt her when she faces off against Muguruza? No. You think it'll help? It will make a difference, no. Question number three. Has Svitolina helped Monfils regaining his high level of tennis form? Love is everything. Yes. Goes both ways. Love her. She even looks better now. Let's go. I won't say what you said in the car earlier about how Svitolina. It's true, though. It's okay, you say it because I'll sound... Well, okay. she was looking very thin, like fragile. Now she has a body on her. That's not what you said earlier. Oh, I don't have to say this on camera, but go ahead. Yeah, she said she had that uh, buttermilk biscuits... Uh, <laughs> I well, said, Monfils is making her look good. Yeah. That's right, not what she go. said in the car. Let's go, though. She was like, man. Well, shit. she's thicker now. Yeah, she, I was, she was talking about that junk in the trunk. Like, she got that junk in the trunk now. Let's go. Ooh. Well, before most pictures, it was scary to look at her on some of those pictures. It was, it, it, you, you had to, I was worried for her. Love is she everything. She was helping now. Love is everything. All right. Uh, question number four. Carla, you make incredible tacos. Does it insult you to eat a bad one? No. Okay. Question number five. What word, what one word comes to mind about Monica Puig beating Kazakina today? 6361. Wow. Mine, mine was dang. Mine was like dang. I had the whole like, woo. I had like a gif. Woo. All right. Uh, question number six. How badly will Novak Djokovic beat Salvatore Caruso, the Italian player that may end up the great Caruso? Two, three, and two. I say three, oh, and one. Okay. All right. Question number seven. Who wins? Alexander, i.e. Sasha Zverev or Dushan Mladjevic? Dushan Mladjevic. Number eight. On a scale of one to ten, how impressed are you with Iga Schwatek? 10. Me too. Number nine. Are you willing to apologize to me after all these years for knocking on my Andrea Pekovic? No. I'm not apologizing to you. Can she beat Marti? No. Question number 10. Are you worried about Sophia Kennan beating Serena Williams? Not at all. Number 11. Better chance of upset out of these three matches. Laszlo Jiring beating, beating uh, Kay Nishikori, Christian Rude beating Roger Federer, or Krajinovic beating Stefano Sistipas. Uh, I'll go with Jiri beating Nishikori. I agree. Number 12. 
Will an unseated WTA or women's tennis player make the finals of the French Open? No. I'm like at Schweitzek right about now. Bonus question, two parts. Are you ready? Bonus question number one. Carla, what is your least favorite shot to hit on the tennis court? Drop shot. Okay. Mine's a half volley right at the feet, but usually that means my feet were lazy and I, I got caught in no man's land anyway. Actually, no, I changed that because I can do drop shots overhead. Oh, that's my candy. No. All right, good answer. Uh, last question. Here we go. Bonus question, part B. All right? Carla, you are making tacos for guests tonight. Five kids, two guests, a lot, a lot of tacos. Mm -hmm. If they don't like them, will you take off your right sandal and either smack <laughs> them with it or throw it at them? I don't think I can hit Barbara and Bear. They, they, they do watch the show. No, of course not. They're not gonna, they're gonna like it. She doesn't smash rackets. If you make her mad, she takes off her right sandal, chunks it at you across the kitchen, or smacks you with it. Voila! Massive destruction. Sandal toss. Let's go, Carl. Gotta be a good sandal. Go. It can't be a cheap, a cheap flip flop. It's gotta be a good one. Ending the ending the show as usual with a quote or thought of the day, and I am turning this over to Stancelas, Stan the Man Warinka. Um, Stan, Stan Wawrinka uh, took a moment out of his after match celebration and autograph session or autograph signing session to help out a very young boy that was crunched in uh, to the wall. Picture this. He's, he's packing up his bags. There's the crowd over there. Hey, signature, signature. And there's a boy that gets kind of trapped up against the barrier and, and, and starts getting, uh, you know, paranoid, probably in pain and probably running out of air to breathe. And he lifts the boy up, takes him to the other side of the net, and ultimately the boy leaves with the towel. That's awesome. Okay? Number one, I'm going to pause and elaborate on this for a moment. Everyone's in a hustle and bustle uh, and a hurry to get to the next red light. How many cars, Carla, do we uh, have pass us every day because I'm driving the speed limit, not a, not a mile over, just the speed limit, loaded up with kids, and there's a car that goes, vroom! All the time. Many, 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 many. Only for 100 feet up the road, I'm right behind them at a stoplight. Right. Okay. Hurry up and wait? Is that what we're doing? We gotta hurry up! Only to wait? That's yeah. my saying. That's Life great. can change. Hurry up and Life wait. Life can change when you don't think and you're rushing. I mean, totally. It can change in a split second. Totally preposterous. The, 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 the other day, um, and I might have just said this and forgot, kind of on my um, uh, animosity towards those that zoom around us on the road with another car, like almost they swerved around before they hit them head on, only to get right back in front of us, only to stop at a stoplight. Kind of stupid. We almost got hit yesterday. And For that the was same thing. Parking lot. Uh, was but we parking watched, we were watching a match not too long ago where there was a young boy who had caught a towel and some big oafy dude comes down and snatches the towel out of the boy's hand only to have it caught on camera. Come on, man. Slow your roll. It's uh, a, well, slow it's like your roll, a, man. It's just a towel. I mean, what are you going to sell it on eBay and you still can't even prove it's real? Come on, man. It's like when they're at a the baseball game and the kid's trying to catch the ball and you have adults like, pushing them. It's crazy. It's yeah. like, oh, daddy, I'm about to catch the ball. I'm about to catch the ball. Daddy, here I come. Here I go. Boom, tackle. Give me that ball. Give me that. Mine. Give me that ball. Come on, man. Furthermore. Not only is the world a busy place and a crowded place, everyone's competing for something. And when we go to a sporting event to have a good time and a pastime, and now we're competing over a towel, I mean, dude, you you got to chill, bro. you got to slow your roll. For if I were the slow pro the players, roll. I wouldn't even throw it. I would say, here, I want you to give it to the security person, to that kid right there. Good job, Stan the Man Wild Rinka, to, to, to find time out of the hustle-bustle crowd that's in your face, knowing you want to get off the court and get in the shower. Believe me, I, I'm sure you got other things to deal with, too. But to notice the young boy that could have potentially been killed. By the way, has anyone ever heard of a, a crowd trampling people uh, and those that get trapped under the crowd ultimately lead to their death? Has anybody heard of nightclubs? People running out the door or other places in the world where hordes of people congregate and then some noise goes off and everybody tramples everybody into the ground. There's like 20 dead people on the floor. Has anybody ever heard about something like that? Yes. And now it's at tennis matches? Terrible. Whatever. Good job, Stan the Man Wawrinka. I will say that I think Stancelaz Wawrinka and Roger Federer will end up facing off. Uh, and, and, and if Stancelaz Wawrinka was the culprit of causing me to lose my bet with Anissa the Zoo to do something really kind of odd on this show, then I'll do it happily. Great job, stay in the man, Wawrinka. Thought of the day, let's go, positive energy, good karma, let's go.
Oh, can Stan Wawrinka win the French Open? Can he? Ugh, I want to say yes, but I don't think so. Anyway, sometimes we must think about more than ourselves, especially more about ourselves than that sweaty towel. And then especially if there's a human life underneath you that's a boy that could die because he can't breathe because you're trying to get your towel. Whatever. In this case, someone could have been killed. And, and good job for Wawrinka. Plain and simple. All right. That's it, everyone. Uh, thanks so much. Much love to all of you. Again, this is your show, and we just have a fun time delivering uh, it to you. Uh, please always give us honest criticism. Uh, 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 what's the word? Uh, uh, let's just say any type of feedback uh, that may make something better uh, than worse for you. So thank you so much. It's been really fun. We got to 500 subscribers, uh, and hopefully we can do better uh, because ultimately I would love to spend my day in here uh, writing this and preparing good tennis and fun for you um, and, and leave some of our other daily grind behind. But hey, a stepping stones uh, are, are the way to move forward. Uh, my father used to always say if you have a bucket and you threw a pebble in it every day, eventually that bucket will fill up and it will overflow. Uh, so that's our uh, step forward, our kind of thought of the day is that we'll keep plodding along and see where destiny does or doesn't take us. Uh, and open up any doors uh, as, as it in terms of opportunity. So thank you so much, everyone. Uh, we will see you tomorrow. Please subscribe to our channel, share our videos, like the video, uh, and we will see you tomorrow. And as Carl always says, Au revoir. Adios. Merci. Merci.